Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game to video. Today we're taking a look at another Brawl deck. It's been a while since we've done one of these, and the reason we're back to Brawl is because we've reached our next stretch goal on Patreon, so let me know in the comments which goal I should set next on Patreon, and maybe we'll be able to reach that one as well. But for now you can expect more Brawl content going forward. This will be a standard Brawl video. I do personally prefer playing Historic Brawl, since there tends to be more diversity, but it's a lot more complicated to record Historic Brawl videos unless there's a Historic Brawl event going on in the client. But they have said in the most recent State of the Game update that they will look at standard rotation, which will of course also rotate Brawl, to see if there maybe will be room to add a Historic Brawl queue as well. So of course that's what I'm hoping for. But for now it's going to be Joral Brawl in standard. So let's take a look at our deck, our commander. Joral, Monvuli Recluse, a 2 mana 1 2 legendary human druid, and whenever we draw our second card each turn, we get to make a 2 2 green cat creature token. And for 6 mana, until end of turn, creatures we control have base, power, and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in our hand. So Joral rewards us for drawing cards. So what separates this deck from most other green brawl decks is that we'll have a few additional card draw effects sprinkled in. So let's take a look at our entire deck. At 1 mana, we've got Gilded Goose for a bit of ramp. Pelt Collector as a powerful 1-drop that will grow over time, and Ranger's Guile, a nice 1-mana way to protect one of our creatures from a spot removal spell. We've got Bag of Holding, which can help us enable Joral turn after turn by drawing a card, and Primal Might, one of the many fight effects in the deck. Then at 2-mana we've got plenty of mana elves to help us ramp, with Elysian Karyatid, Incubation Druid, Leafkin Druid, Paradise Druid, and even Woodland Mystic can all help us ramp. Then we also get to play with Once Upon a Time, which is somehow not banned in Standard Brawl, so might as well make use of it. Scavenging Ooze gives us access to a bit of Graveyard Hate, can gain a bit of life back by exiling creatures from the graveyard, and pick up a few plus one plus one counters. And then Voracious Hydra, we're not often going to play for two mana, but a nice X spell that can fight an opposing creature, or potentially double its power. Then at three mana, you'll notice we have a lot of creatures that enter the battlefield and draw a card, so they make for a perfect follow-up to a turn to Joral. We've got Sky Scanner, a 1-1 flyer that draws a card, Clockwork Servants, a 2-3, as long as we pay triple green, we enable Adamant and we get to draw a card. We've got Generous Stray, a 1-2 cat that draws a card, and then makes another cat if we have a Joral in play. Lenore Visionary, a 2-2 elf that taps for green and draws a card. And then rounding out to three drops, we also have Lovestruck Beast, which can be a nice 5-5 attacker, and uh, Thrashing Brontodon can destroy artifacts or enchantments and Yorvo a 4-4 that will pick up additional counters if we play green creatures. Then at 4 mana, we've got Guardian Project, an amazing card in this deck, as it will help us draw cards with each creature we play essentially. Beast Whisper, kind of the same, a 2-3 creature that draws a card whenever we play another creature spell. We've got a few Planeswalkers with Garruk Unleashed, can make beast tokens or pump our creatures up. And we've got Vivian, another Planeswalker that can distribute plus one plus one counters and can also act as removal with the minus three. And then we have some powerful four mana creatures with Shifting Ceratops, a 5-4 dinosaur that cannot be countered and has protection from blue. And for single green can gain reach, trample or haste until end of turn. And then of course Questing Beast, the Planeswalker Slayer with a wall of text. And then at 5 mana, we've got Return of the Wild Speaker, which also has great synergy in this deck. Can give all our non-human creatures plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. And the only human in the entire deck is our Commander Joral. But of course, all the tokens she generates are non-human, so we can all pump them up with Return of the Wild Speaker. Or we can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-humans we control, which will also enable Joral to make a 2-2 token. Then we've got Elder Gargaroth, another amazing card from M21, a 6-6 beast with Vigilance, Reach and Trample, and whenever Gargaroth attacks or blocks, we can either make a 3-3 beast, gain 3 life or draw a card, so more synergy with Joral. We've got Keeper of Fables, a 5-mana 4-5 cat that says whenever one or more non-human creatures we control deal combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card, so more ways of enabling Joral. And then some powerful Planeswalkers with Anissa who shakes the world, and we've got a Vivian Monsters Advocate, which can also help us find more creatures. And then topping off our curve, we've got the Great Henge, which can also help us enable Joral by drawing a card and placing a plus one plus one counter on each non-token creature that enters the battlefield under our control. So it doesn't synergize with the two two tokens we generate, but it can help us make those tokens in the first place, as well as gaining us a bit of life whenever we tap it for mana. 
and then a third mammoth, a 6-6 elephant with trample, that whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under our control, it can fight up to one target creature we don't control, so that can also trigger off the 2-2 tokens we generate. Then we've got Ugin, the Ineffable, which can help us deal with problematic permanents, like opposing planeswalkers or enchantments. And then Kogglath, the Titan Ape, another way of finding opposing creatures, as well as destroying artifacts or enchantments whenever Kogla attacks. And we can also use the ability to put jor back into our hands as our only human in the deck. And uh, yeah, then the mana base, 23 basic forests and one copy of Castle Garenbrig, which can definitely come in handy. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Omnath, a Locus of the Royal. It's an Elementals deck, and do we have a keep? This hand relies on once upon a time finding a way of ramping, maybe. Or maybe a 3-mana card draw creature to follow up or turn to Jorail. Uh, it's not perfect, but I'll try it. Did not find what we were looking for, although a Lobster Beast does help me run out the Great Henge a little bit faster. This uh, bolt town's a little bit too loud for my taste. Let's turn to Paradise Druids. All right, so I will offer the trade. Could always play Ranger's Guile if I want to. And then I think I have to play the Lovestruck Beast here. And then next turn I can play the Henge and still maybe play Primal Might afterwards. There's Omnath. Can take out my 1-1. One -one. And then let's primal mites for one. And attack. Next turn generous tree can draw a card with Jorrel, thanks to the Henge, and of course its own ability, or we can decide to play Ugin. Thor Mammoth, nice one too. I would like to draw a land here, so I think I'm gonna go with the Generous Stray. Opponent does have two mana for a potential counterspell. It's gonna stomp my Jorrel, but we can protect it. There's my lands and even a questing beast. Alright, so we're not in a bad spot. Next turn I can potentially play Thorn Mammoth. Opponent passes with a whole bunch of mana up. Not sure what they are representing. Probably don't want to tap out for a Thorn Mammoth when there's nothing to fight. So let's start with a simple Leafkin Druids. See if that baits out a response. It's gonna be a sublime epiphany. Which also bounces my henge, but I can just replay it. Is that better than playing Questing Beast? I think so. And then, uh... Do I want to attack? Sure, why not? So if they replay Omnath, we can find it. Still no other elementals on the battlefield, so Omnath is only going to deal one damage. It's going to be a hard cast, Shark Typhoon. Okay. 
I can take it out with Ugin. Vivian joins the fun. Opponent could of course have a two mana counter spell here, does Daneful Stroke or Tails End can counter any of my cards. I think I do play Ugin here. Resolves. Let's kill the Typhoon before it makes any sharks. Opponent gonna make it 2 2. So that will take out my Ugin. Still hoping our opponent taps out for a creature that dies to Thorn Mammoth. Planeswalkers we can handle with Questing Beasts. And if they don't do anything that fits that description, we can just play Vivian. Ooh. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Not bad. Now the Great Henge is 9 mana, so they can't get rid of that. So it's gonna be a minus 3. Does leave Ugin at 4 loyalty, which is perfect for Questing Beast. And uh, if I use my castle, I even have enough mana to go Joral into Questing Beasts. This can go face, clean up Ugin. Then this is my fate. And we're looking good here. Got our card advantage engine, nice board pressure, and some more goodies in hand. Cavalier of Gales is going to be the victim of my Thorn Mammoth. They've got two mana left over, and yeah, they're just dead on board here. Alright, sweet, even survived Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Rada, Heart of Keld. And see yeah, we've got a Keeper, I think. Once upon a time, just to find a land is fine. Paradise Druid is also an option. But we already have a mana creature. Yeah, I'll just take the land. Turn two, Leafkin Druids. Turn three, can play Garrick. All right, never mind. Scorching Dragonfire deals with a Leafkin. Hydra for two, not quite big enough to fight Rada. And Stomp from Bonecrusher deals with Jor-El, although it's not like we had a way to draw a card right away. And now Voracious Hydra for a 3 can fight Rada. It's gonna be an Azusa first. Some fancy lands with a Labyrinth of Skofos. And Vivian to draw. Yeah, I guess I don't hate Vivian. They can keep Azusa. Bag of Holding on top. Against Red Green, probably not gonna need Reach, so let's go with Vigilance. I'd like you to meet my friend, Stompy. And 
the next turn I can even play Ugin and then a free Bang of Holding. Domri is gonna make mana. Is this a Domri's ambush? It is. Alright, and they get to kill Garruk, so not a bad turn for them. Well, hunt's over. So we've got a land on top. So I could play Ugin minus on Domri or Azusa. Can just play Voracious Hydra and uh, fight Azusa. Got a few options. Could also minus Vivian. I guess that's kind of nice. Minus Vivian, and then I can uh, get a Questing Beasts, which can take out Domri. Yeah, that's gonna be better here. Elder Gargaroth could also be decent, but let's go with the Beast. And then this can fight Azusa. And yeah, put on packs it in. We even had a Kogla coming up. Alright, so using Vivian's minus ability doesn't happen too often. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw versus Heliot Suncrowned. So mono white life gain deck. Uh, yeah, this hand's okay. We've got uh, turn two Joral, turn three generous tray start. And no one drop. What do I take? I've got four lands. I probably don't need Mystic since I want to go turn to Jorel, turn three Stray. And then turn four Vivian. So I'm probably better off taking Kogla as kind of a later play. Sure. Turn to Hushbringer. Uh oh. That shuts down a lot of my card draw. So, if I'm not gonna be able to draw a card from Generous Stray on three, I might as well play the Ooze first. Luckily we have Vivian that can potentially fight Hushbringer, but not before it picks up more counters. Hmm. Yeah, this is annoying. Pantheon also gaining one life, putting a counter on Hushbringer. So it's gonna grow out of uh, fight range pretty soon. Heliot almost a creature. Heliot is a creature. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to deal with Hushbringer here. If Garrick was still in play, I could pump one of my creatures and then Vivian can fight afterwards. Maybe the plan is to play Kogla first and then Vivian fight, but that might be too late. Maybe I can top deck Primal Might. It's gonna be Vivian Monsters Advocates. Can make Reach creatures at least. But, um. Yeah, still in a bit of trouble here. Diversity is our greatest strength. 
And also it can also make something unblockable by naming green. So I'm pretty close to just dead. Arcan of Sun's Grace. At least it does also get shut down if they play an enchantment creature, but not if they play a regular enchantment. They can start drawing cards with Dawn of Hope. I was looking forward to making a whole bunch of cat tokens, but yeah, Hushbringer, quite effective against us. So they're all going face. I probably just take the damage from Hushbringer. And then I can trade for Taranika. They can protect it if they want to sacrifice Alsaid. I guess never mind. They can gain one from Altar so they can put a counter on the Taranika at instant speed. So I will have to double block. Sure, and then take... I guess I would just end up dying here. Hmm, this is tough. I guess I do have to jump here after all. But it doesn't leave me in a winning position. Arkan gets a counter. Make that two. And they can still draw a card, but they decide not to. I guess they can do it at instant speeds, because again the altar gains one life. Great henge on top. Any way for me to draw it? Not with a Hushbringer in play. Yeah, I think this is game over. Anything I can search up with Vivian's Minus that can save me. I guess Elder Gargaroth is kind of okay, but... Once they put more counters on Arkan or Hushbringer, that's no longer the case. I hope I get out of hand for you. I brought friends. Lots of them. Just double checking. Yeah, Gargaroth has to be the pick. But no fight means I'm probably just dead to the flyers. Interesting, they did not activate altar. Elspeth conquers death, can deal with Gargaroth, and then we're dead to the flyers. Alright, GG's. We kind of got pummeled here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Domri, Chaos Bringer. And yeah, we've got a fine opening hand. Turn on Goose, turn two Joral, turn three Servants, make a cat token, hopefully. Turn 1 Pelt Collector, a scary start, especially when followed by turn 2 Paradise Druid. So they could already play Domri next turn. Could decide to play a 5-5 five five on defense if I use the Goose. But that's kind of underwhelming. Well, let's hope the opponent doesn't have uh, a burn spell or a fight effect. At least Fabled Passage is still tapped here if they fetch up a land. So no Domri this turn, but maybe an answer for Joral. Which 
just a gilded goose. And it's gonna be a Domri's ambush after all, killing my commander. Alright. So we're not off to a great start. I might have to make the 1-1 one -one and play the beast this turn just to have enough pressure, or I guess I can save the food now to play Nissa on turn 4, which might be better. Can play 5-5 five -five defensively, but then I won't have a way to necessarily enable it to attack. So I guess in the play is just Clockwork Servants. Sure. And we'll pass a turn. Then we'll maybe have a turn for Nyssa. Can attack with my lands. Maybe play Ooze afterwards. And then when we do eventually replay Joral, we'll have Bag of Holding to enable it. Domri gonna plus to make mana. So two mana left over here, potentially. For a Zurta Goblin with double riots, so could be a 3-3 three, three haste. It's just gonna be a 4-4 four, four on defense, grows a belt collector. Alright, opponent with a pretty strong start. So the 4 force line up well against the uh, lands from Nyssa. So maybe the plan is to play a defensive Lobster Beast after all. Yeah, if I play Nyssa, she's just gonna die. Domri can also make any creatures hastes with the plus one ability. So Nyssa's gonna be under a lot of pressure. A 5-5 five five lines up pretty well here. And then the goal is to eventually play this Thorn Mammoth, which can start fighting stuff. So if I can play Nissa and protect it with a Lovestruck Beast, that's ideal. Hope they don't have any giants flying dragons. Domri Anarchobolos joins the Chaos Rider, so now they can fight, although it is a trade. Chaos Bringer is still plusing for mana. Another 2-drop. Incubation Druid with a plus 1 counter, so now makes 3 mana right away. That's pretty nice. Opponent is empty-handed, but they can refuel with uh, Chaos Bringer. Maybe they're working their way up towards an ultimate, who knows. Alright, so if I play Nyssa, make a land into a 3-3 haste, I can attack Domri with everyone. The one loyalty Domri, that is, to take it out. It's probably step one. And then I can still play Ooze afterwards. I'll probably end up losing Nissa, but... So it goes. They could also double block the land with Incubation Druid and Goose. But that's fine by me. Alright, so we'll take out Incubation Druids, and then anything I can spend the two mana on, I can sack the foods, or make a foods, but if I do that, I won't have Goose as a blocker, does that matter? So Druid's gonna die, they lose the plus one bonus, 
So we'll have a 2 1 Druid, 4 4 Pelt Collector. So I could still save Nissa potentially by jumping with a Goose. So I don't think I'm supposed to make a food token here. All right. I'll just see myself out then. Now if they draw a creature, they can give it haste and Nissa probably dies. But if they use Domri for a card draw, then uh, they can't use the plus one to give haste. They found Arcbow Ranger, that's a good one. So that probably kills my Nissa here. And yeah, we lost land as well in the process, so we're even further away from casting Thorn Mammoth, which was kind of our way to climb back into this game. gonna tear you apart I wonder if her opponent's trying to ultimate Domri here I must seek comfort in the land at least I can take out Vivian all right Domri's gonna minus three at long last finding Yorvo and or boreal grazer and Garruk to draw. Can take out Vivian. Could also play Garruk and then use it to pump the Clockwork Servants. And then I can take out Domri if I send both at Domri. I think it's more important to take out Vivian here. Although hasty, Yorvo is kind of scary too. How many creatures in graveyards? Quite a few, so the ooze can eat three creatures, become a 5-5, five five. that's not bad. So yeah, I think the plan is send both at Vivian, and then just play ooze and eat some stuff. Opponents got to ruin this sun now. The ties that bind us all. And then they can still play Yorvo using Domri. The elements. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. Gonna be 4 4 haste, but the ooze can become a 5 5 here. So I'm not actually that upset about this attack. And then probably want to kill Yurva over Pelt Collector. And I think I can even take out Nissa if I use Garruk to give the Ooze Trample. Um, which is probably the play. If I give Clockwork Servant Trample, that's not enough. Because then they can jump. I guess I have to attack with everyone then to take out Nissa, which I probably can't afford. So yeah, let's just Garruk. Trampled ooze. They're a stampede of work. And take out Nissa. Fight on without me. And then I could keep up two mana to potentially sacrifice a food token. But I can also gain life with the ooze. There's one creature left in graveyards. I guess we can play the bag then. And hoping to draw land for Thorn Mammoth. Could help us stabilize. A 
Domri's gonna plus, and a Clothus joins the fun. And that will be an active creature, if I'm not mistaken. 4-5 haste. Okay, maybe chum block it with 1-1 uh, one, one token. We'll see what happens. So these are going face. This is also going face. I think I just double block the forest then. Take 8, I can gain 1. They can make a food token with a goose. Beast Whisper to draw, not the land we were hoping for. Clothus is going to start dealing 2 damage, we're at 3, can gain 3 with the food. There's 2 more creatures in graveyards to eat with ooze. Can I afford to give ooze trample and attack Domri here is the question. I think so. Opponent can potentially put some toughness in front of it. But it also reduces their devotion for Clothus. Opponent lets Domri go. So damage happens. Clothus no longer a creature. But the ability will persist. And then... I could also decide to play Jolrael. And then activate Bag of Holding, make a token. Is that going to be enough to survive? I'll have three blockers at one life. It's going to be close because Pelt Collector does trample. Maybe I'm better off playing Beast Whisper and keeping up two mana for Ooze and uh, the food token. Food token gains 3 up to 6. Yeah, let's do this. I must go. Alright, I'm at 1. Just to land the draw. They can't quite replay Domri since the goose doesn't have food. It's going to be Pelt Collector attacking, so we'll gain the 3 here, and then I can jump with my 1-1, one, one. and fall to 1. Now this is on cast, so I won't get the token from Jorail if I play her. Because the draw will happen first. Unfortunately for you, left quite hungry. So six mana. I need to spend two on ooze just so I don't die. Which means four mana. I guess I play Jorel anyway. Primal Mites can take out Spelt Collector, but not this turn, because I need to mana to stay alive. And then I don't think I can afford to attack with the Ooze. Yeah, it's gonna be close. 
If I found the mana sooner to play Mammoth, we would have been in much better shape. Clothis, Trisex, Domri's Ambush. Have to respond. Let's see, what happens if I exile the Domri's Ambush here? I guess I can also just exile whatever Clothis tries to exile. So I don't die, maybe that's the plan actually. So we're not dying to the Clothis as long as Ooze is in play. So that's good to know. Still can feel too comfortable at one life. You call it anarchy. For me, it's oh, I was hungry where those got to. Finds and race for honors and gruel spellbreaker, alright. And our opponent passes, so let's eat some more creatures. So I don't need to Primal Might for a very large amount. can even do it for zero. Sure. And still eat a creature with a scavenging ooze, so my uh, ooze doesn't die. Alright, so Domri down. And we'll draw some cards. Make sure to keep up enough mana to use the ooze in response to Clothis. They could try and add mana to try and cast the Forerunners, so we can also prevent that with Ooze. So Ooze definitely putting in the work. So yeah, I don't think I want to give them the extra mana. Now I do have to be a little bit careful if my opponent picked up like a 2 damage burn spell. Because if I tap out and they keep it up, they can respond to the Ooze gaining one life and kill me. Four four spellbreaker turns on Clothis, but we've got plenty of creatures to chum block with. Clothis attacks. Chumping with an actual creature instead of a token also puts more food in the graveyard for ooze. And now I know it's safe to activate ooze, because they're left with one card in hand. Alright. Opponent's got five creatures in place, so do I. I should start thinking about killing my opponent at some point. So maybe trampling the ooze attack my opponent is the plan. If they can play the Forerunners next turn is a problem if they make food with Goose here. So I'll probably need all my blockers back. So let's start here. And draw a few cards. Ugin is the ineffable. Can play Cistern. Play Yorvo. Could have played Yorvo first and then it would have picked up a counter, but I wanted to see what we could draw first. Make a beast. 
And hopefully this is enough power toughness to survive the foreigners. The goose will hit me for two in the air, but I can gain enough life here, hopefully. Definitely a close game. Without ooze, we would have been dead a long time ago. It's going to be a Ravager Worm instead. Okay. What are we killing? Probably the Beast Whisperer. Takes out Yorvo, maybe trying to decrease the amount of toughness we have to set up the Forerunners next turn. They don't really have a profitable attack. End of turn, activate Ooze. Alright, so using the Leafkin, I think I can afford to play Thorn Mammoth now. Take out Ravager Worm. Make another beasts. My pack's always growing. And then can kill the goose for free. At some point I can also think about using Jorel's ability. For now, still play defense, I think. And once we take out a few more creatures from the opponents with the Thorn Mammoth, we can clear a path and start attacking. So I think we've turned this game around. No play from our opponents. End of turn, I guess we'll use the bag. That's another way of potentially putting a lot of stuff in my hands to set up a big Jorrel attack. Play Gargroth. Thor Mammoth can take out Spellbreaker. Even if they proliferate, it's still only a 5 5. And I also get to take out the Arboreal Grazer for free. And Gargroth can also gain me some life. And then, do I kill my opponent if I activate Jorrel? Four cards in hand. Uh, it's probably close. I think I'll wait one turn. Or do I go for it? Opponent's at essentially at 30 with a food token. Can give this trample. Let's see, how many attackers? That are all four fours. Maybe I do have lethal. All right, let's do a no math attack. Yeah, this is probably enough. All right, GG's. Jorel activation to finish out the game. Sweet. Alright, that was an epic battle.
My internet even disconnected in the middle of that game, but luckily I was able to reconnect in time. So yeah, Jor-El Brawl, definitely a fun deck. Might not be able to compete with the most competitive decks like Kinnan or Niv-Mizzet, which luckily we were able to dodge today. But they have uh, announced that they would be introducing a new Brawl queue with the upcoming Amonkhet Remastered that would match the more competitive decks against each other. So you don't have to face those Kinnan and Niv-Mizzet decks as often. So that's definitely going to be a nice change. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank all my patrons again for making this possible. I want to thank you for watching. And as always, have a nice day. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.